video 0210, nested components. Yes, we can have families in families. And if we create them correctly, the parameters in the nested family can be controlled in the host family, making this a really powerful option. From your chapter two folder, open the file chapter two, nested components, start. I've made some slight changes to this file since the last exercise, so you will need to open this particular file. And I'm going to be working in the 3D view to start with. From the Create tab, click on Components from the Model panel. There is no component family loaded in the project. Would I like to load one now? Well, yes, please. Now all I need to do is browse to my Chapter folder, Chapter 2, and I'm going to load in Chapter 2 Controller. This family is a face-based family. You can see that the tooltip and the status bar is asking me to place an instance on a face. And so I'm going to place this family on the right face of my component. Click. It's done. Press Escape to finish the command. Now I want to open up my right view. I now want to align this family to two existing reference planes. I've created them in here, but things are beginning to look a little bit messy. And this is one of the reasons why we name reference planes. To make things even clearer, hold down your control key and select these four elements. The two reference planes, the family I've just loaded, and the solid extrusion of the family. From my view control bar, Click on Temporary Hide and Isolate, and Isolate Elements. This has now temporarily hidden everything else, and it makes it a lot easier for me to work with. Let's just scroll in. What I want to do now is align the center point of this family with the two crossed reference planes. So from the Modify tab, click on Align, select the vertical reference plane, and the center point of the loaded family. As I hover over it, you can see that it's picking up the reference of that family. Let's make sure we're going to lock it in place. I'll do the same with the horizontal reference plane and the horizontal reference of the family and lock it. Now those are locked in place, I can reset my temporary hide and isolate. Let's go back to the 3D view. And we can now see the nested family. Let's look at the family types. We've got a new parameter called controller offset. It's 250. Let's change this to 100 and see what happens. My family moves. Click on OK. Now, this is great. I can move the controller around on the face of my family. But what happens if this controller comes in different sizes? And what happens if this unit may or may not have a controller? Let's address the dimensions first. From the project browser, expand the families section. Here you can see that we now have generic models and the chapter two controller family loaded. Right click on the type and then click on Type Properties. You can see in here that we have a width, a length, and a height. And I can change them. But what I'd really like to do is be able to change them from my Type Properties in the family. To do that, I can use this special Link option where I can link width of the controller with a parameter in the host family. Now I could link this with width, but the width parameter here is for the width of the host family. So let's add a parameter and let's call it controller width and click on OK. Click on OK again. You can see that this dimension is grayed out and we now have an equal sign. Let's repeat that with the other parameters. Length, we'll add a parameter. We'll call this controller length. Click on OK and OK again. And finally, the height. Add a parameter, controller height. 
OK, and OK again. Finally, let's spin the model around so we can look at the right elevation and go to my Family Types dialog box. Expanding the dialog box, you can see that I now have controller width, controller length, and controller height. Remember that the controller offset was to the center point of the controller. Maybe I want the controller to always be 75 millimeters from the edge. How can I control that? Well, that's with using another formula. There's a controller offset. So for the formula, let's say the controller offset equals the controller width divided by 2 plus 75. Click on Apply, and we'll see that that has moved my controller. 